Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss, and with Kang the Conqueror on deck as the big bad of Marvel Phase 5 and Phase 6, a man who in Quantumania footage displays a terrifying amount of amnesia for the amount of Avengers he has killed, new visual clues from Loki revealed in a book with insights from the creative team of the series have confirmed that Kang variants are sadistically collecting trophies from the Avengers that they've conquered. We began to discuss this not long after Loki Season 1 ended, but now as we've begun to learn a lot more about Kang in Quantumania footage and in Loki Season 2 footage, a trailer for which that I saw at D23, and it will hopefully drop online before the end of the year, we can actually deduce that Kang absolutely killed Iron Man Tony Stark in another timeline, and in fact, based off of what we know about Kang, probably just killed him in only one timeline. And I think it might explain why there was no Iron Man in the Illuminati in Universe 838 of Multiverse of Madness. The recently released book, Marvel Studios' Loki, The Art of the Series, includes one page showing concept art of He Who Remains study in the Citadel. Set decorator Claudia Bonfe gives us a brand new insight into what exactly we're looking at here. She said that He Who Remains has a collection of of antiquities. The shelves are full of collections that he's brought back from throughout the universe, and they are all related to either a cultural thing or time, or just anything that's interesting or unique throughout the universe. I didn't want to put any bright colors in there. It was all black and gold marble, so I stuck with wood tones that would work, maybe something that had a little bit of a caramel feel to it, a warmth, and then was mixed in with metals and had a nice old patina feel to it. I wanted to draw attention really to what is happening in the scene and not the set dressing. Well, nice try, Claudia. You did amazing work on this series, I'll give you that, but the psychos here on YouTube are going to find easter eggs no matter how hard you try to hide from us. We already know that on one of those shelves is an Iron Man helmet. There are a series of other helmets and pieces of armor. There's a crown with two fangs or horns, maybe a headpiece of a Loki. And then over on the right is a chalkboard that in the series had Newtonian calculus equations on it. But here in this concept art depicts geometry and trigonometry, reminding us of Spider-Man No Way Home when Peter Parker managed to defeat Doctor Strange in the mirror dimension by trumping Strange's focus on calculus with a simpler trick of geometry. That calling back Spider-Man Homecoming when the first class of Peter Parker's day was either trigger physics, and Peter knew the answer to the problem because it involved the kind of trajectory equations that Peter has to do in his head every day when he whips around with his webbing. I mentioned all this because, oh, wow, bad news, Kang also statistically most likely killed a Spider-Man at some point too. Now, all these trophies remind us of Uncanny Avengers number 8, the Kang Dynasty, 2,000 years in the future, where Kang shows off a trophy room filled with relics that he snatched from across the multiverse, including multiple cap shields, multiple Iron Man helmets, a Mjolnir, Magneto suit, Doc Ock arms, Spider-Man mask, Electra and Daredevil gear, they literally everything Marvel is in this room. But back in the Citadel, over on the left, he remains as a telescope, which is interesting because what exactly is there to look at from the Citadel other than the sacred timeline orbiting around it? Meaning this Kang variant might physically look out at moments in history using this device to inspect what parts of the timeline must be adjusted or pruned. This telescope is his Eye of Sauron. Now the latest trailer for Ant-Man the Wasp Quantumania shows Scott Lang meeting Kang the Conqueror who offers him a deal to give him back time if he'll steal back something that was stolen from him. Scott says he's an Avenger and Kang asks, you're an Avenger? Have I killed you before? So a Kang definitely killed an Iron Man at some point in some timeline. He who remains as an Iron Man helmet, but that doesn't mean he who remains was the one to kill that Iron Man. He who remains was just the Kang variant who used Elias to defeat all the other Kangs and end that last multiversal war. He Who Remains could have collected these trophies from other defeated Kangs or even inherited this whole citadel from one of the other Kangs because remember that broken statue in the lobby there was a past struggle in this location. Now if we assume several Tony Starks across the multiverse had similar life trajectories at least the way Tony Stark was depicted in What If there is probably some pivotal nexus moment where it would be the most important for Kang to stop Tony dead in his tracks. Tony certainly came close to death in many moments in the Kandar province in Afghanistan flying through that wormhole in 2012 Avengers, fighting Thanos in Infinity War, on the Guardian ship at the beginning of Endgame, but I have always believed that the most important moment in Tony Stark's life as it pertains to Kang, Nathaniel Richards, a thousand years later in the 31st century, was this moment. This time in the shape of a Mobius strip. Inverted, please. <sighs> Shit! Yes, Tony Stark's discovery of time travel via quantum navigation. I firmly believe that this moment and Kang are connected. I love you 3000, Nathaniel Richards' birth year being 3000 something. And yeah, I also believe that he remains actually named his prize chrono monitor Mobius and Mobius after this historic moment. Nathaniel Richards needed Tony Stark to make this discovery in the year 2023 so that a thousand years later, Nathaniel could build on Stark's research and master the technology of time travel and multiverse hopping. And if you think about it that way, that actually makes it pretty precarious 
hilarious for Kang to ever try to kill Iron Man because if he needed him that badly to discover his missing link of time travel for him, there would not be many opportunities after that discovery for Kang to kill Tony, considering it led directly to the time heist in Endgame and the Battle of Earth in which Tony's fight with Thanos led to his death anyway. So I think the likeliest universe in which Kang killed Iron Man was actually the one universe we've seen so far in which Tony was mysteriously absent, Universe 838 of Multiverse of Madness, a universe that we know had some presence of Tony Stark at some point in its history with Ultron Sentry's Stark tech walking around, but at the time we visited it, no longer had a Tony sitting on the Illuminati dais. There was one open seat, but looking back, I think it's likelier that open seat belonged to either the 838 T'Challa or Namor or maybe Balder the Brave. If 838 Tony Stark was killed by Kang, that would explain why the Illuminati of that universe defines multiversal incursions as side effects of Darkhold dreamwalking and not side effects of any time travel mechanics. For them, multiversal wars are caused by dark magic, not 31st century science. 838 seems to be the one universe without vertical time travel. Though, I don't know, Charles Xavier did reference himself in X-Men Days of Future Past, so who knows, it might have consciousness-based time travel as a rule to it. Have I thought more about this than the filmmakers have at this point? Eh, definitely. That's why you should hire me, Marvel! But really, how ironic is it that whether by future scientists using technology or by wizards and witches using an evil spellbook and dark magic, the multiverse is destined one way or another to collapse into chaos? It's almost like neither of these things are really causing it, it's just gonna collapse on itself anyway. And incursions are the fate of all of us. But I want to ask you, do you think we'll ever see a killing montage in which Kang slaughters Avengers? I mean, I don't know, Marvel did get cold feet and removed gore doing the same thing to the gods in Thor Love and Thunder, but my hope is that they actually cut that so that it would have more impact when Kang does it to Avengers in Kang Dynasty. Let me know your thoughts down below. Follow me on TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter at EA Boss. Follow New Rockstars and subscribe to New Rockstars for more analysis of everything you love. Thanks for watching. Bye.